Hey student, watch this video and learn three things you must do to achieve English fluency. Yes, I'm going to share valuable tips in this lesson. If you don't know me very well, hello, I'm Teacher Briggs, and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Yes, because every week I post different kinds of English lessons to help you become a better and more confident English speaker. If you have already done so, well, I appreciate it. Hit the like button because that helps the channel. But let's talk about about good stuff. You know, guys, here on my channel, I help um, a pre-intermediate and intermediate level, okay? I help students who already know some English. Basically, what I like doing is help students go from stuck to speaking in six months at an intermediate level because it is possible you're not a beginner anymore. And guys, at this level, I, I, I'm going to be a kind of like a poet right now. So close, but so far. So close, so close, and still so far. It's a song. <laughs> and guys, we all feel that way sometimes, especially at this level. Oh man, I've been studying for three years, four years, six years, but I, I, I feel like I'm getting a little better, but it's so slow. You know, I don't know what to do anymore. I study, but what's wrong? And Many changes you need to make at this level, many of them, are not only connected to the language per se. Oh, study more vocabulary. Oh, study, listen more. Oh, speak more. Have a private teacher and then just speak and then your problems are solved. It's not just that. And I could make a video, and I have videos like this here on my channel, where I could just tell you, well, do more this of vocabulary, do more this of listening, and then you're going to achieve English fluency eventually. That's it. Just speak a little more, and there you have it. That's not the only answer. And I can tell you that because I've been working as a teacher for more than 17 years. So I know when I speak that, I know what happens to students. They only assume that, oh, if I just speak a little more, then I'll get better. Or if I just listen a little more, then that's the answer. Of course, they help. I'm not a hypocrite. They help. But there are things you need to do in addition to strategies, English strategies. This is something I do with my students in my academy. With my students, I show them the importance of connecting habits and emotions. These habits are connected to the language. I'm going to share some valuable tips here. But we also need to analyze the mind, your emotions, how stuck you are right here, what things you believe. A language mastery will require More than just knowing the rules, knowing the words, understanding people. It requires more than that. And that's what I help my students in my academy understand. They have all the support in terms of the language. Of course, you have to study. Of course, you have to practice. And additionally, the mind part, understanding emotions, understand some important concepts that I'm going to share with you in this lesson, okay? Okay. Now, that being said, the first thing you're going to do, and you may get upset, but yo, it's important, okay? Work on self-discipline. Fluency will require discipline, okay? Will require saying no to things, things that are fun, okay? Okay? Will require decisions, which are difficult sometimes. So, fluency will require postponing instant gratification and in a society where we are constantly being um, stimulated you know we have uh, we can easily feel a certain way nowadays we don't have the culture of understanding how to say no and postpone pleasure and postpone gratification And this goes against self-discipline because that means that I will say no to a lot of things in my present so that eventually I get the results I'm looking for, the benefits I'm looking for. And that's what English fluency is like. I do say here on my channel that I help students go from stuck to speaking in six months, but never in my mind I believe that after that the game is over. It's only getting started. The marathon is just getting started because achieving fluency, that ultimate level, 
is not like running a sprint. It's like running a marathon. And every time you get better, every time you get to a better level, you do something better. You will immediately have that thought in your mind. Oh, but there's more to be done. I still need to work on this. Oh, I still need to work on that. Well, I still forget some words. So this is also something I talk to my students about in my program. The journey continues. It never ends. Do you think I am completely, completely satisfied with my level? No. And if I stop, my level will go down. It's natural. So this is something we need to understand. And only with self-discipline, I keep studying. It's not just because it's my job. Yes, of course it is my job. Of course, I have to work. I have to study. But there are things that even if I come here and I talk to you guys, because my level is really high, I have to do certain things to maintain that level. So I also need to work on my self-discipline. And guys, without self-discipline, you can buy lots of books, you can travel the world, you know, you can travel abroad to study English for a month, for six months, but without self-discipline, you will tend to focus on what is easier, especially at an intermediate level because you understand some English. So you will focus, no, no, I'm just going to do this quick vocabulary exercise. It's easy. I don't have much time anyway. So I'm going to focus on something that's practical, but not what is necessary. And we tend to do that. And I, I speak from experience. I also can fall into this trap. I have to monitor my behavior. So self-discipline will help you stay consistent, okay? That's a, a whether you study, and, and this is something that some people come and say, oh, but it's easier when you have someone, we're human beings. It's our nature to avoid pain and studying, taking the time to focus, that will cause pain. Okay, we, we, by nature, we just want pleasure or avoid pain. Okay, by nature, we want pleasure or avoid pain. So even if you have a teacher or you don't have a teacher, even if you are in an online program, like I have my academy, even if you are inside the academy, you have to work on self-discipline. I can show you the way. I can force you to do the work, you know? You may have someone, you may live in the United States or Canada or Australia, Ireland, but at the end of the day, the decision is on your hands. So self-discipline, self-discipline is mandatory if you want to achieve English fluency, not just with language, but pretty much anything you want in life. But you could be wondering, but Priscilla, how do I, how do I work on self-discipline? How do I develop my self-discipline? And here I'm going to quote Socrates, to know thyself is the beginning of wisdom. Hmm. Wow. I like that. You know, I like Socrates, wonderful philosopher. Guys, you can only improve your self-discipline if you know your strengths and weaknesses. You have to start somewhere. Okay, I could come here and I could tell you, oh, you have to study five times a week. You have to do this for two hours. Typically, when students click on this video, that's what they're looking for. Okay, the exact recipe for success. And when I say work on discipline, it gets a little open. It gets a little broad because there are many things you can do. So you need to understand your tendencies. You need to understand what you tend to do when learning a language when you have to do something important. What are your tendencies? Okay, I know mine. So I created mechanisms. You can teach your brain to be more self-disciplined, but this is the first step. Understanding what you're good at. And when I say good at, I'm not talking about, oh, I'm good at vocabulary. I'm good at writing. No, understanding your behavior, your tendencies, okay? I know this is something that I learned about myself. I know that I am the kind of person, this is not a recommendation, I'm sharing what I learned about myself. I learned that if I study five times to six times a week, I stay more consistent. If I study three to twice a week. Why? If I study less, I let my brain feel lazier. 
So every day I'm doing something in English. Okay? So I know my tendencies. I have many more. Okay? I know things that if I do on a certain day, my discipline level, my focus level will go down. Okay? So you need to understand that. And this is how you build your self-discipline. You also need to understand how you deal with failure. Oh, I've been studying for three years. I suck. Dear, oh dear, the best is yet to come. The journey never ends. So do you give up easily? Do you want the result now? That attitude will lower your discipline because you're waiting for gratification, for instant gratification. And a core principle of self-discipline is to postpone later, okay? To postpone gratification and focus on the process. How do you deal with your, with your setbacks, with your mistakes? What kind of attitude? Because if you're very hard on yourself when you make a mistake, if you're very hard on your uh, opinion of yourself, how do you expect to have the discipline to go back and study? Discipline also uh, has a little bit of the, the importance, also requires a little bit of motivation. But if every time you study, you're following the discipline, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. But every time you study, you're like, oh man, this sucks. My pronunciation is terrible. Nobody understands me. It's kind of hard. Okay. How do you deal with waiting? You know, once I had a student many years ago, she, she was a private student. See, private, private student. I'm telling you, it's not only about having someone. Oh, but then you, ha and she studied four times a week with me many years ago. And when we started, she knew nothing, nothing. She was a complete beginner. I had to speak Portuguese in the first month. Okay. With, when I was a private teacher, I had a process of speaking a little my language of my language and then moving on to English In about three months, no more, no more, uh, Portuguese. That's usually my method with beginners. Okay. I don't teach beginners. That's not my goal. I'm just sharing a story. Okay. In four months, that student who knew nothing was speaking in English 100% of the lesson during the four days a week. She was speaking in English and I didn't need to speak in Portuguese anymore. So 100% in English. She looks at me one day and she says, I'm not happy. I'm not getting better. And I was like, excuse me? I was like, so what do you want? Do you want to speak like me? That's what you want? And then she said, but you said you learned in six months. Yeah, but if I compare my six months when I started to... 20 years of experience? Well, at that time it was less, like 13, 14, okay? If I compare to 14 years of practicing and studying, do you think it's fair? Huh? Is it a fair comparison? So how do you deal with waiting? So in four months, she had a private teacher, very good, by the way. I consider myself an extremely competent teacher. No more Portuguese in class. Four months, she was married. She could understand her husband more because her husband was American and she was panicking because it was really hard. She was, I don't even know how she married, okay? Because the communication was zero. Four months. And she was not happy. Not happy. So how do you deal with waiting, okay? So this is very important because this will really damage your ability to stay disciplined if you're not realistic, okay? So can you go from stuck to speaking in six months? Yes, I believe that. I did that to myself. I have helped many students do the same. We just need to understand that. Oh, so in six months, I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to be talking like a, a native speaker. I'm going to have all the necessary vocabulary, all the grammar in the world. Well, that's unrealistic, okay? So if you don't understand how you deal with these situations, then it'll be difficult to develop self-discipline. And then it'll be more difficult to deal with the actions you need to take in your week, you know, during the, the study routine in your uh, study plan, okay? And speaking of study plan, let's go to, to number two, okay? Pay attention to your environment to your environment and to your process, okay? And when I say process, I'm talking about study routine, 
Okay, I'm talking about the plan you follow. An environment, look at this woman sitting on the couch. She's looking on her phone. And oftentimes the students think they're watching a lesson. They're studying and that's all they're doing. They're sitting down on the couch or in bed, you know, you name it. And then they're like, yeah, oh, oh okay, oh, let me listen to a podcast. Oh, okay, and then they're listening. Come on, you know, does your environment encourage you to study? Hmm, okay. Do you even have a designated space? Okay, do you need it. I, this is my designated space for working and studying. Typically, when I study, my stuff is here. Okay, I have my books and notebook and everything. You need to have a designated space. You need to help your self-discipline. And self-discipline starts with that. Okay. So is your environment your cell phone only? Again, I'm not against cell phones. Of course, you can use your cell phone to help you. When I'm studying, I use my phone. But is this the only environment? Okay, is this it? The only environment you use. You don't have a notebook. You don't have uh, 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 anything else to support your experience. You don't, you don't have a place. You don't have a book. Even if it's a digital book, okay? You need to have a book, something. Stop trusting social media so much. Oh, but teacher, I'm on YouTube. Fantastic. Are you taking notes? Hmm, interesting. Oh, the phone. Okay. Do you have an audio recorder to record your voice is speaking? Because you need to speak. You want to achieve fluency without speaking? Oh, but Priscilla, I don't, I don't have a private teacher. Me neither when I started. And I practiced English speaking alone. I teach my students in my academy because my academy is not private just me and my student one, no. I teach my students to build the habit of speaking, even if they are alone. So unfortunately, people don't pay attention to their environment, to their process. And as a result, fluency gets too far. They feel close. Oh, I learned something, I, uh, but so far away. Watch out, okay? Process again, if you have no idea what to do, how do you expect to achieve fluency? If you have no idea how, what to study, how to study, how do you expect to achieve English fluency? It gets harder. I'm not saying it's impossible. I don't believe it's impossible. I believe everything you set your mind to it, you know, I set my mind to this, I can do it. But am I disciplined? Am I willing to pay the price? You know, that's very important. And it's expensive, okay? Expensive. Mastery is expensive, but once you achieve it, you earn people's respect. People will look at you differently because achieving results in life is not for everybody. It is for everybody. I'm going to correct myself. This is for everybody, but not everybody is willing to do what it takes. Okay. That's a very important thing. Make sure before I share number three, okay, make sure to subscribe to my channel. That really helps. More than 50% of the people who watch my lesson uh, is not subscribed. So help the channel. And if you're interested, if you really want a boost to help you keep going on the journey to fluency, get my study plan cycle. It'll help you organize your study routine to help you stay focused, to help you build your discipline. It'll show you what needs to be done. But again, it shows you what needs to be done. You have to do it, okay? very important but now number three keep track of your actions especially if you're alone okay because when you have a teacher your teacher will be like yeah we've been doing this we still need to work on this but if you're alone you got to be your own teacher you got to keep track and you can determine how to keep track i keep track by writing okay by writing and speaking so I make recordings and I speak about my progress, what I've been doing, what I need to do. And I also write, okay? I write the content I'm studying, the purpose, the organization, what I'm going to focus on. I do that. When I'm reviewing a day I study, I always end up, okay, today I worked on this, I worked on this, and I worked on that. Um, it was difficult to use these new words I learned. So I keep track, okay? And keeping track of your action, actions will include coming up and stick coming up with preposition is missing coming up with and sticking to a weekly plan you need to have a plan 
You can get my plan, study plan cycle, or you can create your plan, or you can watch some videos here on my channel where I talk about creating a plan, but you need to have one. If you let whatever decides what you do, or notifications from YouTube, oh, I'm here because I received a notification from YouTube, that's why I'm studying and awesome, not a plan. And this is difficult when it comes to discipline. Discipline requires organization, okay? Holding yourself accountable for following the plan. As I said, with my students in the academy, I teach everything they need to do. I create all the lessons they need to watch, all the materials they need to use, but I can't force them to do the work. It's their responsibility. So you follow a plan, you bought a plan, you got to follow it, you got to do, do what you got to do, okay? Keeping track of persistent mistakes. The students get so worried about mistakes, they get so angry at mistakes, but they don't work on the pers persistent mistakes. They just generally speak, oh, I always make this mistake, oh, I always make that mistake. But okay, so are you working on them consistently? Because you have to be more persistent than your persistent mistakes. The most persistent one shall win. And I hope it is you, not your persistent mistake. So if a preposition is something that you constantly get wrong, this is natural, preposition is hard. But you have to be more persistent than your persistent mistake. Being, reali excuse me, being realistic with your progress. As I told you about the story of that student, four months, no more Portuguese, 100% in English. She was speaking more, understanding more, and she was miserable. I can't, I can't do miracles. You got to be realistic with your progress, okay? This is very important. I study Italian. I'm confident speaking Italian. Am I awesome, perfect? No. I have troubles just like you guys do with English. I am realistic. I could study more. Yes, of course I could. But I'm staying consistent. I'm studying every week. But I know, I am aware that I could add more days. I could, okay? That's something we need to understand. So I am realistic with my progress. I am realistic with my actions. So that I, when someone asks me, oh, so your, your Italian is not getting better. I know why. I know exactly why. I'm not just going to say, yeah, because it's difficult. I cannot say, oh, it's because the listening is so hard. They speak so fast. I can't. It's not fair. Okay? Uh, not having a plan that only works on what you want to do. This is important. Okay. Oh, I really like podcasts. Fantastic. Can you use them? Of course. But don't follow a plan that only tells you to do what you want to do. This is dangerous. Comfort zone. And to achieve fluency, you will have to do things you don't like doing. Okay. Honestly, I don't like working on fanatics. But I know that I have to, especially at my level. It's boring, but I got to do it. It's not always fun, but I include it in my practice because that's what fluency is all about, you know? You're going to have to do things that you're not always excited about, but that's the journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to share this lesson with a friend, subscribe to my channel, but other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye!